Hello, hello, it's another great year for cinema and the Oscars have arrived. So you know what that means, it's time I make my yearly Oscar video to see if it's possible to predict best picture in the era of the preferential ballot system. Now, last year I made a video about how that preferential ballot works by using real ballots collected by guild members. Now, if you haven't seen that video, I really recommend checking that out first. I'll put the link in the description below. My hope from that video was two things. A, demonstrate how the preferential ballot works, and B, see if it's possible to predict best picture. And though it was really close, the second place winner of my experiment ended up taking home best picture, not the first place. Okay, so it looks like we have a winner, Aroma wins with 53 points. Roma wins. Ugh, all that work for nothing. This year, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I decided to do something a little different. I'm gonna be doing a similar simulation like last year, but instead of using ballots, I'm gonna be using Oscar stats. That's right, Oscar stats. We love them, we hate them, we have all at one point in our life chosen the wrong winner because a particular Oscar statistic told us to go against our gut. Oscar stats can be really tricky because every year some major Oscar stats get broken. And it's really tough to know which specific Oscar stat to trust. So this is what I did. Right here, I have 11 of the strongest and most staggering Oscar stats I could find pertaining to Best Picture. And right here, I have all the Best Picture nominees for this year. For each one of these stats that these Best Picture nominees fulfills, I will award it one point. The film that has the most points at the end and the most stats in its favor will be our winner. So let's do this thing. So right off the bat, I made two major rules going into this game. Rule number one, I wanted to only use stats to go back to 2009. Since that was when the Oscars started implementing their preferential ballot system again, and being that that system has gotten us some pretty unpredictable winners, I decided that using data from 2009 and above was only fair. Rule number two, the stat needed to have at least an 80% accuracy rating or more. Anything lower I deem to be too inconsistent for this experiment. Also, I just want to warn you that this video is going to mention a lot of different guilds and information that would make the average viewer fall asleep. My girlfriend is actually behind the camera uh, operating and she's nearly falling asleep right now. Okay, so those are the rules. Let's jump right into this thing. So starting with the first stat, this is the SAG Ensemble stat. So what this says is since 2009, eight out of the last 10 Best Picture winners have had a SAG Ensemble nomination. So note, only three films have went on to Best Picture since 1995 without the SAG Ensemble nomination. That was Braveheart and most recently was Shape of Water and Green Book. And this year, the uh, five SAG Ensemble stats was Bombshell, which wasn't nominated. And then we have uh, Jojo Rabbit. We have Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, we have Parasite. And we have Irishman. Okay, moving on to our next stat. We have the DGA nomination stat. And this one says, since 2009, 10 out of the last 10, Best Picture winners were nominated for DGA, so that's a really good sign there. And this year's DGA nominations were Parasite, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and 1917. Okay, so moving on to our next stat, the Editing Nom stat. So what this stat says is since 2009, nine out of the last 10 Best Picture winners also received an editing nomination. The only outlier to that was Birdman. So we're giving a point to each film that had a best editing, editing nomination this year. That is Joker, Parasite, Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, and Ford versus Ferrari. All right, so moving on to the Golden Globe screenplay stat. Since 2009, 10 out of the last 10 Best Picture winners has received a Golden Globe nomination for screenplay. That's a, that's a really good stat. Okay, so giving a point to each one of those nominees this year, nominees for Golden Globe screenplay were Irishman, Marriage Story, Parasite, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Two Popes. Okay, moving on to our next stat, we have the Any Acting Nomination stat. 
So this one's a little loose, but what it says is since 2009, every single Best Picture winner also received at least one acting nomination for an Oscar, right? So this has actually happened four times since 1995, however, Braveheart, Titanic, Lord of the Rings, Slumdog Millionaire, but in the last 10 times it hasn't happened. So I think it's worthy of giving a point to each film that has an acting nomination. That is Irishman, Marriage Story, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Jojo Rabbit had an acting nomination, Joker, acting nomination, and Little Women finally got its first point. There we go. All right, moving on to our next stat. We have Best Director Nomination Stats. So this one says, since 2009, eight out of the last 10 Best Picture winners also received a Best Director nomination. Now this has been broken uh, two times out of the last 10 years. That was Argo and Green Book, as we all know. Uh, but it's still a very strong stat. It has an 80% accuracy rating for the last 10 times, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a point for that. And I'm going to go ahead and give a point to Parasite. Parasite was nominated for directing. Irishman was nominated for directing. Joker was nominated for directing. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And 1970. Wow, 1917 only has two. That's crazy. Okay, moving on to our next stat. We have the Golden Globe directing nomination stat. Since 2009, every Best Picture winner has received a Golden Globe nomination for director. So very similar to the last one, I'm going to give a point for every film that has a Golden Globe nomination for directing. That is 1917, Once Upon a Time, Joker, Irishman, and Parasite. All right, so just to give a little recap, right now we have Once Upon a Time in Hollywood with six points, we have Parasite with six points, and we have Irishman in the lead with seven points. So dang, uh, it's a pretty close race. We only have 1917, supposed to be the front runner this year with three points, and then we got Joker and JoJo with four. Okay, Little Women not doing so well with one, Marriage Story two, and Ford versus Ferrari also not doing very well with one. Moving on to our PGA stat. Since 2009, eight out of the last 10 Best Picture winners also won PGA. The only outliers to that were Spotlight and Moonlight. And then one year there's a tie between 12 Years of Slave and Gravity, but still very strong stat uh, still. And I'm gonna give a point to the film that won that this year. And that was 1917. Okay, so moving on to our next stat. Now this is a pretty quirky one. This is the Telluride Film Festival stat. Uh, this one I did not know. I just recently found out about this one. It's a pretty amazing though. But since 2009, eight out of the last 10 Best Picture winners played at the Telluride Film Festival. The two films that won Best Picture that did not play at the film festival was Green Book and Hurt Locker. This year, only two films screened at that film festival and that was Parasite and Ford vs. Ferrari. All right, so moving on to our next stat and this one is gonna include a lot more Guild wins, right? So there's WGA, DGA, SAG, all those don't have a really great track record to predicting best picture. DGA has a 60%, uh, which is pretty good, but it doesn't meet that 80% threshold. However, since 2009, eight out of the last 10 best picture winners have won at least a DGA, a WGA, the Writers Guild of America, or a SAG Ensemble. So there was three films that did that this year. One was Jojo Rabbit, won a WGA. Parasite won a SAG Ensemble and WGA. And 1917 won the DGA. Okay, moving on to our final stat. And it's upside down. What a finale. This is the Critics' Choice Golden Globes or BAFTA. So all of these award shows doesn't have an amazing track record when it comes to predicting best picture. Golden Globes is 50%. Um, Critics' Choice has a little bit better with 60%. And BAFTA, not so good either. It's only 50%. So none of them really meet my 80% threshold. So I combined them all together. And this is the stat that came out of that one. Since 2009, 10 out of the last 10 best picture winners have won at least a BAFTA, a Golden Globe for best film, or a Critics' Choice. There was only two films that won one of those this year, and that was 1917 and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Okay, so the winner today was Parasite that won with eight votes. 
followed by Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and Irishman at 7. Then we got 1917 with 6 points, Jojo Rabbit with 5, Joker with 4, Marriage Story and Ford vs. Ferrari both coming with 2, and then Little Women with only 1. Now, I know you might be questioning the validity of this experiment, right? I would too. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you have even stopped watching by now. But that being said, I did play this same experiment out for every year since 2009, and every year the film with the most points did end up taking home Best Picture. With the exception of two years, one year there was a tie between Moonlight and La La Land with 10 points each, and in another year Roma did beat out Green Book by one point. However, one major stat that I didn't include in this, and maybe I should have, is that no foreign language film has ever won Best Picture. Not since 2009, heck, not since ever. Never in the history of the Academy Awards. So if I were to include that stat, then my previous years, Roma would have tied Green Book, and that would give an extra point to the other nominees this year, tying up Parasite with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and Irishman. 1917 still trailing by one point. Well, there you have it. Now this little study does give me some pause with 1917. I mean, it's got to beat a few stats in order to win Best Picture, so it might be a closer race than we think it is. Or possibly I just fell down the old Oscar stat rabbit hole and this will end up meaning nothing. Only time will tell. Either way, I want to thank everyone for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. I want to thank Mark Johnson at the Awards Circuit team. He's an expert on all this and all these Oscar stats, and I really appreciate all his help and, and helping me out with this. Also, if the subject of the Oscars interests you, I really want to recommend checking out Sasha Stone at awardsdaily.com. She's a pro on the subject and writes really great content on this, and I'm going to leave their links in the description below. If you have any questions about this video or have any suggestions on maybe what I should do next year, leave those suckers in the comment below. Otherwise, I'll see you next year.